What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. A dooby dooby dabby, tell me your hobby, shadoink! Oh. <laughs> huh. Okay, I'm in. I'm in on it. I think that gets that's great. <laughs> shit. Shit shit doink? You just could, uh, you couldn't believe it. <laughs> Shadoink is the loudest word anybody's ever said. <laughs> There's I don't even know if capital letters do does that word justice. That's capital underline <laughs> exclamation point uh, bold. Tr- trademarks. Now, was that show me your hobbies? Uh, no, doobie doobie doobie. I think I said tell me your hobbies. I don't me know, man. Shadoink. I blacked out and then I said shadoink. Uh, welcome <laughs> in to the spitball. I know it. I like that word. That's a shadoink. A, I mean, worse words could have come out. Your mouth. Yeah, uh, Spitballers episode 272. Welcome in. Would you rather life advice and a draft? Today we are drafting hobbies you'd like to try. Hobbies you'd like to try. So that should be fun. I may or may not have started to build. <laughs> I started to build a list and yeah. I was trying to, to type it to myself in a little private channel mm-hmm. where I keep my mm-hmm. notes. And I might have posted my entire list in a uh, more of a community channel mm. with you two gentlemen. Oh, man. <laughs> well, did you delete it? Well, you screenshot it. Uh, you're darn right. I did not letting that go. Not letting that Of go. all the things to copy, hobbies that I'd want to try. Well, I got to draft it before you, my friend. Uh, so we're doing that today. Yeah, in the Spitballers channel is where I put it. Yeah. That's, that's fine. It's a good place. Um, And then and then I heard you start to read them, and then I go, oh. <laughs> oh, you've got a similar list. Uh, as I, I didn't know we were so similar. Well, let's uh, let's kick it off. By the way, you can follow the show on X at Spitballers Pod. We appreciate your reviews of the show on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And uh, we always, always want to encourage you. Share some joy with the friends and family in your life. Tell them about the Spitballers podcast. Make their lives that much happier. Here we go. Would you rather? Would you rather question? Would you rather bite into a chicken strip Coming and out discover hot. it's raw or eat a bowl of cereal and realize the milk is curled halfway through? Ooh. These are both bad. I halfway through. <laughs> yeah, it's a, at least in one, it's like you you start to bite. You're, oh no! What is this? Well, it, not ingest it. Yeah, I was going to say the, the, the halfway through means that you swallowed like a bunch of bad milk. Yeah, I. It's funny because our family, my wife, she just celebrated her birthday. We went to the Melting Pot last night. The Melting Pot, if you don't know, it is a fondue restaurant, and. Uh, they have come up with a way to charge you eight times the money to do your own work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, but it is fun and it's delicious. And it, our couple kids had never been there and you have, you know, your cheese fondue at the beginning and then you've got your main course and they bring out raw steak, fish, shrimp, you know, whatever you order and raw chicken. Okay. Now, you know, if you, if you cook your steak raw, whatever, it's fine, right? Because it's a slab of Mostly, meat. Mostly, yeah. So the inside of the, the the raw meat has not been exposed to bacteria. Whereas like a chicken, you don't want to eat undercooked chicken. So I'm thinking, why do they let people cook their own chicken, man? It seems- I a- was paranoid. I cooked my chicken and I'd be like, oh, this is a little too soft. Did I undercook my chicken? It seems a, a health hazard. It does. For a restaurant it's a to liability. allow that to happen. And yeah, I'm the- I, have one way of cooking chicken, and that is to uh, annihilate it. <laughs> just, just blow it yeah, away. I, uh, I don't I cook it till it's a brick of chicken. I don't. I don't trust the thermometers. I like you do the the cut test and look on the look at the color of the meat. You're like, nope, 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 nope. That is not charred enough. Yeah, I so look the potential bad that comes out of this. I'm eating the bowl of cereal with the... Really? Yes, because of this. One, I've enjoyed half a bowl of cereal. Clearly. I didn't notice until halfway through. Okay. Which means okay. I'm going to make the extrapolation that it's not that bad. It doesn't so you can, taste... So you can mentally do that? I think I could... Ment- because I'm not worried about getting 
like salmonella poisoning and being in the hospital. Yeah, but it's, but it's just you, a bite. Let you, me tell you a you little don't have story. To, you, oh, okay. My oh, father you spit it out. No, yeah. my, my father once was it, this was when I was a child eating some frosted mini wheats. And he was enjoying this nice bowl of frosted mini wheats. Okay. Enjoying it. Mm. He ate over half of this bowl. If, in fact, I think he almost had finished the bowl when he noticed late into the cereal bowl. How is this possible? That there were oh, gosh. little oh. tiny no. bugs. bugs. No. Oh, oh, bugs? Bugs. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> what were you thinking? Chunks. They're just, I thought you were oh, the, with the turtle. No. <laughs> you're, you're Wait, bugs, bugs over chunks? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. no. That's, that's yeah. surprising. No, because you give me the yogurt chunks over the bug. Oh. No, because I because I can eat bug. I'm gonna feel gross. I will feel terrible. But my anxiety, if I ate a, a half a bowl of something that was I deemed to be spoiled, I am the like the expiration date on the milk. This is this is law. Like, oh, for sure. You can you cannot compromise. There is no court that can overpower. No, no smell. Smell no, test? Give, no way. It doesn't. You can't, oh, I'll, I'll you smell can't trust the nose. I'll smell. No, wait. Hold on. Let me ask this question real quick. Clarity on the law. Okay. I just want to understand what is right. on the the books. Yep. The date on there. If yep. you look at your watch, it's the same date. Yeah, that's bleach inside that. <laughs> inside that gallon. It might as well be bleach. So the, it expires actually like at midnight when that day begins? That's right. Exactly. Now, uh, Mike, do you go I, through the full day? Eastern Standard Time. I would like to believe I could, but I'm guessing that if I went and grabbed the milk and it was day of, I go, this it's not worth the risk. Not worth the it's risk. It's not worth it, man. What if you don't have any more milk? You got you just you're eating something else. What if you've already poured your cereal in the bowl and you're waiting to pour the milk in? Then you pour the cereal with the everything in the garbage. <laughs> You have to dispose of the cereal because you made a mistake. Yeah, I mean, and, mistakes are mistakes. And the, the thing for the smell test is, to me at least, all milk kind of smells like it's on the verge of going bad. If it would, no matter what, no matter when I smell it, I know that. Look, rotten milk is is horrific, but there's the point where it's it's turning. Have you ever? And, s- and, and people with sophisticated yeah. sense of smell, like my wife, can she could tell you if it's rotten. I'm like, it's probably rotten. Here's the it's problem. Like, it's, I just, it's brand new. No, it's, it's probably rotten. It smells different if you already read the expiration date. <laughs> oh, for yeah, sure yeah, okay. It does. That's a great point. You really want to smell it first. You, and, if it, I read the expiration date, and then I, I would never smell it after that because I know it will make me gag. <laughs> no matter what, I open that the, the ammonia that is coming out. <laughs> ammonia in my mind. Well, there's some kind of poison. There's, yeah, I mean, Milk no way. Just is, it's, it's not going to hurt you. If you eat raw milk, That's, raw. I mean, raw. if you <laughs> eat raw milk, uh, if you're eating milk, it's hurting you. Um, but the, yeah, if you're eating it, I yes. see what you're saying. The anxiety that I will have for the rest of the day after consuming half of a bowl of, then I find out it's in my mind poison. I'm just gonna at every moment and go, oh, hit the, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Here. That's, Here we go. How bad is that with the chicken, though? But I can spit it out. Yeah, but you know, there's like salmonella res, I'll, you know, I'll get, stuff inside I'll get your the mouth. mouthwash so residue. To 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 just finish that little story about my dad. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> this is a great, uh, great sidetrack. But Andy was saying he has enjoyed this, you know, half right. a bowl of cereal, uh-huh. and then he found out it was curdled. Well, my dad did throw up. Oh, he had enjoyed it, but the knowledge of I just had a bunch of bugs. Wait, so he was not, he didn't, like, receive that information with, oh, well. No. He received it with, uh-oh. Yeah. He, he, he uh, received that with, oh, my gosh, I have just eaten food that has been infested with bugs. And if there's, honestly, though, okay, now that you're thinking about it, if there's bugs in there, it's because this milk is already poisoned. Like, this milk has gone bad. Yeah, uh, whether it's in the this milk was, or in the but cereal. But I'm saying, or- like, bugs, to me, bugs don't want fresh milk. They're not mammals. They're bugs. Well, they they, they the, want dirty, nasty, disgusting, rotten milk. The bugs were in the cereal. Ah, okay. Because we okay, looked into the okay, box okay. of cereal. Yeah, that makes far and, more sense. And, and found more. It wasn't in the milk. But my point is, once you discover what you have eaten, yes. yep. you can still pay the penalty on yep. all of it mentally. It's not like, so well, what, it was good until well, then. What's the final word here? By the way, when you do the smell test, I assume you also then subject someone else in your family yeah to confirm yes. the smell 
Oh my gosh, all the time, especially. I'm with, always like, you smell this now. Hundred percent. Like, <clears throat> I'm I am the worst with uh, having good intentions with a with a nice chicken dinner, but then you leave you defrost and you put it in the fridge, and it's like you don't make it the next day, mm. you know. And chicken, once you put it in the fridge, you it the timer is going, and it, it chicken, just like milk, always smells like it's it's gone bad. Chicken. Always smells like it's gone bad. Yeah, it I've never like opened. A, it I've like a n- fart. Never opened a fresh, brand new piece of chicken. That's why Mike been makes like, it well done. Just, yes. just breathe it. Just, just you know, <laughs> Mike. Ooh. Mike cooks that, it is so that long. Some fresh raw chicken. <laughs> Mike cooks as long as like a powder at the yes. end. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you touch it and just poof. So when this question was asked, I thought uh-huh. to myself, well, like I know that you can get. You know, you always hear, "Oh, you can get salmonella from from chicken." You gotta you gotta cook it well. But how likely are you to actually get sick or not get sick if if you are touching raw chicken? Because we all touch raw chicken. We cook. The three of us have cooked. We've handled raw chicken before. We rinse our hands or wash our hands I, or whatever. I soap wash my hands <laughs> after every step with raw chicken. I, yeah, the, the sal- big salmonella has. They have, I, I don't. I don't. Good. I don't know that they've done enough because I started researching this. It's not good, man. Yes, big. You're just because it's I'm, big okay. salmonella. Well, big salmonella is doing a great job. <laughs> Let me tell you what they're doing out there. The CDC estimates that salmonella that looking at chicken <laughs> causes more foodborne illness than any other bacteria. Chicken is a major source of the illness. In fact. And this is from <laughs> this is from CDC.gov. According to my data. <laughs> About one in every 25 packages of chicken at the grocery store are contaminated with salmonella. All right, I'm out. And even slightly undercooked chicken will not kill that. So it's like you're... you're one in... T- this is at the grocery store? Yeah. Like... Cook your chicken, man. Why are we eating chicken? Because <laughs> it's good. It's not that good. Oh, it's good. It's not as good as steak. I like chicken a lot. Yeah, but think, think about what you got to do then. One in 25 have it. And then you got to undercook it. Right or not wash mm-hmm. your hands. Mm-hmm. So then those two have to come together. Like maybe let's just say one out of every fifty times you cook chicken, you accidentally undercook it, and then one in twenty five mm. packages has salmonella. Do the math, Jason, right now. Uh, you, you have a twelve percent chance. Of- oh no! It's well, way- I've got a. I'm going to put out a cookbook about how you prepare chicken safely. <laughs> <laughs> how to overcook your chicken. By Mike Wright. <laughs> First, you're going to fry it for five minutes each side. Yeah. Then put it in the oven at 475 degrees for yep. 10 to 25 minutes. Yep. And once it's done, Toss microwave it. it. Put it in the air fryer. Yeah, put it in the air fryer and microwave it. <laughs> final step. <laughs> All right. I am, uh, I'm staying away from the chicken. Final answer. I, I cannot have ingested it. I'm going to. Or my day is, my day is oh, ruined. I can't, I, I can't eat that milk. <laughs> I can't eat that milk. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hope that. Look, one in twenty-five. Just that alone. Okay. I mean, those are those are. When that it means twenty-four odds, that's not out too of bad. Twenty-four out of twenty-five. This does not have salmonella. Yeah. How many times have you eaten chicken in your life? Twenty-five times. No, a lot more than that. But oh. this is just a one-off. Yeah. I I took a bite so of you're raw going, chicken. Right. I think. I think you're doing I'm the taking bowl of the cereal. Odds. No. Well, I mean, no. you're doing the chicken. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, would you rather have to push your uh, to push start your car every time you go somewhere, <laughs> like like the Flintstones? Well, that's funny. Or have to climb in through a second floor window every time you come home. Okay. Do I get a? Uh, yeah, say what's my, can I lock the ladder in, or apparatus? do I have to set the ladder up every time? Josh? Do I have to climb an actual lattice? <laughs> the ladder is there, but you have to climb it every time. Hmm. Okay. okay. All right. But a la- I, Do you imagine how bad bringing the groceries in would become? Now is it just your just your? It's every time you come home, so yeah. it's the first time in. So you can climb up into the window mm-hmm. and then unlock your door, right? And then on, and then just take the groceries in. It's just when you get home, you gotta go in through yeah, the your first second entry. story window. If that's true, that's not that bad. It's not that bad to climb a ladder to crawl. It's a lot in- better than push start in my car, brother. If I have to go in a ladder once, just when I come home, that's fun. The, I'd the, like to go in my. You know, I'm going to do that right now. I mean, that's that's a good time. <laughs> you can you can do this. You can you can open a window and just you know start doing that every time you get home. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah I'm going to do I'm it. Gonna Has do it. anyone ever put like an ornate front door looking like a Ooh. like a front no, and I'm not talking about a nice stair entrance. I'm saying there's just a door, but it's a fancy looking front door and there's nothing underneath it. It's just uh, You're where, saying on the second yeah. story no, That's, you can't even stand in front of it. Right. You have to have a ladder to get in. No, no one has ever done that. <laughs> to answer your question, no one feel, has ever done that. I, I feel like there are there are some like super large houses that have a faux door at the end of a hallway or something. So on the other side, there's technically... Well, yeah, if, when you're in, if you're in Toontown, that happens. Oh, that's it, true. It is from Toontown, <laughs> yes. But um, I don't know. I'm in, I'm in on this ladder thing. Think it could be fun? Yeah, I mean, I figure I've got a chute on the other side of the house. How fast do you have a yep. chute to, like, to get out? Yeah. You're, okay. This is uh, based on the uh, popular board game. Yeah, chutes, chutes and ladders. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All, right. All right. I'm Because uh, I haven't heard a, uh, <laughs> a, slide. a slide referred to as a chute in quite a while. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what is a chute? Like How a fast? garbage chute? Yeah. Or laundry. How fast do you, uh, like, what speed do you have to get a car up to for it to push start? Oh boy! I don't think you're going to be able to get it going fast, especially Papa Josh should how know fast, this. How fast Papa can you Josh push a has car? worked in the automobile industry. It's like five miles an hour. It's like not. Five? It's not much. It's you just need be space though, man. Yeah, yeah. That's imagine the, being parked like parallel parked on the street, and you're like, I got to get out of here. Oh, parallel you're gonna parked. To, would you're going to have to go right out into the road, and people can. Well, you just you, if you were parallel parked, what you would have to do, and you're by yourself, <laughs> is you would have to turn the wheel, <laughs> get out. Go push it a few inches. The by yourself go thing. Backwards. Go get in the car. Turn the wheel the other way. Go back the other side. It would take 30 behind minutes. Behind the car and push it four more inches. And you'd have to keep pushing your car back and forward, Austin Powers style, <laughs> while stopping in the car to turn the wheel each time before you could finally push start it yeah, fast but, enough to get going. But you have to run into the car. No, no, no. You go door out. Oh, that's right. I yeah, was yeah, thinking yeah, maybe yeah. you could strategically just park on hills and get this thing really you going. Could. Yeah. Well, like, would you pull up when you park and like leave your back tires up on a curb? <laughs> so just you for could, a little boost. I don't know. I'm just thinking like. I don't think the speed will be the real problem. No. I mean space. I, space is much more like like you it's would like never a plane parallel park taken ever. Off. But now it's like, think about every every single time you ever get in your car. How often, if ever, mm -hmm. do you get in your car, start it up, and drive forward? It's uh, you, uh, only on only those, great, back in. those great or moments. Or the pull throughs. Where, yeah. yeah, the pull through. Like, oh, man, the car in the parking spot in front of me is gone. I Check had, this I out. I had an embarrassingly over-exuberant joy when I pulled into a spot the other day. <laughs> And I was like, ooh, a pull through. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because. Can't the, wait to get out of here. That's the issue I have with this push to start is that you're always going to have to start pushing it backwards. To get out. Yeah. To I mean, you're, you're going to change your habits. You're only looking yeah, for pull throughs. You can, you can back into the garage. I guess you're just backing in yeah. every part. The answer spot. is for me very clearly. I want the ladder situation. I'm very intrigued by it. I think it could be fun. And it's imagine being pursued by a robber in that scenario. You're not getting into my house, and then they have to climb the ladder after you. Yeah, you think I want? Or, wait a minute, hold up. You're saying that this is if you're being pursued by a robber, by a by a, a villain here, that you want to climb a ladder it's in the, front of it's them. It's the best place to be when being pursued. I think it's the if I was let, let me put myself in the criminals. Yeah, come on up, okay. come on up, trying, buddy. You're trying to get away from me. I get my feet. I'm just pulling the ladder, bro. I'm just. You make a good point. I, you're yeah. on a ladder. I'm talking about. Well, I'm just going. But you, uh, okay, I was talking here. about both people on a ladder. Yeah, That's you, the best scenario. The rules of of the villain are they have to climb the ladder. Yes. And guess what? I'm kicking them. I'm kicking them. They fall off the ladder. Cause what's the word? Shadoink. <laughs> right onto the ground. I, I, it, okay. If there is a rule that all people chasing you must. Continue up the ladder. They're trying yeah. to break into my house. If they pull the ladder down, they can't get my valuables. <laughs> hey, they're pulling the ladder down, bro. They're just shaking it. They're just. It would be so easy. You're so safe from home invasion if that's your main door. Okay, it's not. It's 
it's a permanent ladder. And I'm pulling the ladder up out. Okay, it's, 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 it's a fire escape ladder. Permanent ladder. Then I'm grabbing his foot. <laughs> oh, and I'm look. I'm kicking. Yeah. Oh, and man. I'm wearing cleats all, all the time. All I know is <laughs> I would story. be more afraid <laughs> to be the person higher on the ladder. Oh, yes. No, no way. You would, you would be more afraid, but the. You're I not as like, vulnerable. Yeah, you, you got the leverage. You just start stamping down. Yeah, man. Okay. With my cleats. I mean, obviously in one battle, good, one you, good stomp on you a hand. Want to that usually... person's going ah, because that's also the rules of ladders. One hand is stepped on. That's right. You let go with both, and you fall <laughs> backwards. I've yeah. seen them movies. Yeah, Lion King, bro. Um, I'm taking the push to start. Oh, I'm taking wow. the ladder. All right. right. We got time for one more of these, or should we good, be moving good, on? Good luck push starting put, your car in Arizona. What's that? Oh, I didn't think about summers. We can do another one. Papa Josh with us today. Judge Giamatti here as well. Um, when you die, would you rather be turned into a diamond or have your ashes launched into Ooh. space? Well, talk a- me out of space here. Well, would you like to be a girl's best friend? <laughs> huh? Huh? There's a whole song about it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, um, you're worth more as a diamond. Well, yeah. Yeah, but you're being you're being like tossed into a drawer, potentially. Maybe you could you could be worn and remembered all the time. It could just be a. You guys are this diamond thing is really like a attractive to you. It's interesting, but I'm I'm more with you of like let's go. How about a diamond launched into space? Put my uh, go into space. Take my ashes. Let me rejoin the stars. I don't know that I would want like I I would love to go to space right yeah I don't know that I want my ashes <laughs> like I won't I won't know or remember and now it's like do you care where your ashes are um I want someone to be able to visit me I mean you you're personally cool. I don't want to be I don't want to be cream you're not a cremation I'm not a cremation I'm not a cremation either yeah I'm curious as to why we both chose them. okay yeah I want to hear about this okay. and right. Mike are you do you have a request then I I'm drop me off on the corner man I do not care. <laughs> Dude, so you can put me in the family so you, oven. I yeah, know. taxidermy me, cremate me. Nobody's ever done 50-50, by the way. Ooh, Ooh, a half burial? Well, half, that's just like a- Half body, half cremation. You just you you bust the top half, Yeah, and you, and you uh, flame up the legs. <laughs> Imagine doing the inverse. <laughs> <laughs> These are my, my sweet Donnie's legs. <laughs> His top half was cremated. <laughs> yeah. We turned it in. We shot it into space. Yeah, no, here's his top half. He's just in this urn. I mean, it kind of feels like it would work the other way, but the... Yeah, it does. Like, it's like, like totally okay. To, like, I wanted to save... Because it's the face. Yeah, it is. The face is who the person is. Well, like, Could you if, just save the head and then cremate the rest to have yeah, more ashes? I think you'd have a lot more ashes. And yeah, I mean, I would want the neck. I, okay. You know? A little because otherwise, you, you know, I'm amount, imagining this mounted on the wall. Of course, uh-huh. I don't think you want just just the head. You gotta have the neck. This is good. Um, but no, t- I want, so, yeah, you want to hear why, why? Yeah, why? Why not cremated? Why, Andy? Will you go first. I mean, my reasoning is that I like a place to go. You you can still have a memorial to be remembered. There's people have memorial areas where they keep the urns. Well, but not like out in, in like a rainy cemetery. No, yeah, they, they'll do those. They'll put the urns out there? Yeah. Then what's the, I mean, but, but why? Why not just bury the body? Because it's expensive. It's more expensive to. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Caskets, Way more. Yeah, that's, that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. The casket. I is, thought through it, it. The casket racket. You know how you can get half off, ridiculous. right? <laughs> 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 that's true. You, you just, you're like. Uh, what, could we cut that? Uh, what are the most? Half? What are the most easily burnable parts of me? Um, I no, I didn't. I didn't know that. I don't think that's common, at least, to have Which? like a headstone with an urn in front of it. Like, I want the headstone. I want somebody to stroll through the cemetery and just be like, "What a chap he was." Did you know you could just put a headstone anywhere and not actually have to be there? Yeah, there is something that's a, you lose something. That, yeah, you absolutely lose mostly because the body's not beneath it. Yeah, you want you want to visit the bones, you know. <laughs> that's that's what you want now, when you Jason, go. You didn't answer. No, but, but so here's you <laughs> want to visit the bones. You you sound psychotic. <laughs> like really breaking this down. No, 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 no. We no. all visit really, the bones of our ancestors. I think really breaking this down 
you shouldn't be cremated because like I mean sometimes for for whatever reason you know a uh, body needs to be exhumed or or maybe they you know who, who knows what they need in the future he doesn't want to from- lose his chance of being resurrected <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, that's maybe. exactly yeah okay Are you already signed up for one of those cryo things you show me where um no no i ha- i have not yet um not yet not yet um yeah i just feel like keeping it whatever is <laughs> left of me intact is more you practical you want to be exhumed I, potentially I, I mean if i feel like if he you, wants a family member one day when they invent something to be able to go dig into the ground mostly, pull his dna out yeah, and resurrect up, him like a like a mammoth because i would have assumed yeah, someone, do that with ash someone who wants to be buried is like do not disturb my do not disturb my remains you yeah. think that's a rest in peace situation yeah if you if if you're ashes if uh-huh. you are now ash yeah do you have DNA? Is that no? Your DNA is toast, man. Really? It probably yeah. gets burned. It's up. toast. Interesting. That's oh. ash. Okay. It's ash, man. But they could do like a, like take a couple strands of your hair and just put them in like a baggie. Oh, pre-burn. Just, oh, no. no, no. Oh, you're saying before yeah. before yeah, yeah. the burning, yeah. you just say, and then they just tape it on the back of the urn. I just, assume just I won't have hair by the time I die, but. <laughs> So we got to find something else. Maybe just skin, keep a finger. Some skin cells, that's fine. Yeah. A finger? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I need part of me that you visit. Haven't you ever seen Fifth Element? They can bring them back. Just from a small part of something. I have seen the... The Fifth Element? The, the very true story. So you are you don't care? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So is it is it uh, it's like spouse's choice yeah. in your situation? Like yeah. Whatever you're feeling in the moment? Yeah, if, if I have to make the decision, I'll go cremated. For the sake of the show, okay. So because you don't would, care, will you go fifty fifty for us? Sure. Okay. okay. Now, why, why? Why would you choose that? Cheaper. Interesting. You just care because about cost I, to the next generation. I actually thought your reason was going to be cost, but I thought that's why you would go the other way. The what? To I thought I thought you to drain the to money. Dra- yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> my money. That's my money. You spend it on me, <laughs> and you will respect my body and my wishes. I want to be also. I want to be buried with 50 pounds of gold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to take Make a it happen. quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, Spitwads. I want to talk about one of the products I believe in the absolute most that we've ever had as a sponsor, a product I used well before they were ever on the Spitballers podcast. We're talking about rocket money. Look, everybody has complicated finances right now and, A lot of that has to do with the fact we are subscribed to, I think the average is about 10 million subscriptions. All right, maybe I'm making that up, but it feels that way. There are so many different subscriptions out there and Rocket Money makes it so clear to you what subscriptions you have, how to cancel them. Sometimes like myself, uh, I had two subscriptions to Peacock. I don't know why. I don't know who signed up for the second one. We have two of them though, and that's how I figured it out was through Rocket Money. It is a simple, easy to use, personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users. It's helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting your money. Do what I did. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash ballers. That's rocketmoney.com slash ballers, rocketmoney.com slash ballers. Spitballers to the rescue. One of the things we, uh, you know, enjoy doing on this show, uh, is answering life advice questions from from people out there that maybe you know you need help from yeah. experts in oh. life life experts right difficult uh circumstances yeah uh hard time in your life important uh moral ethical dilemmas interpersonal conflicts all the things we're experts on all right like getting buried like getting buried uh Brett from the website which I am recommending the 5050 from this point on <laughs> gentlemen the well best you, of both oh, you get half a casket yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh man, just just cut in half. We can it's go, like a magician. We thing. can go split skis. Me oh. and the wife, we just oh, one blue casket. casket. So someone's got to pick legs. <laughs> that means someone's oh, got to no. pick legs. You're <laughs> you're gonna be wearing her legs. No, you can put <laughs> you can t- the half in each half. <laughs> no, I know, but you don't want you don't want like if you put the halves right next to each other and line them up, you don't want it to look like 
one torso going into another torso. Wait, you got to have torso oh, one going into one burial plot and it's two yeah. people? <laughs> All right, sorry. Life advice question from Brett on the website. It says, gentlemen, I've been married for 10 years now. My wife is an attractive lady, but I've noticed over the last few years she's starting to wear more and more makeup in order to combat her aging. Mm. I appreciate that she's wanting to maintain her looks, but I'm not digging the new too much makeup look. Oh, how do I bring this up without getting myself into hot water? I've tried dropping the "I think you're pretty without makeup" line, but she's not biting. You have you Help. have come to the right place, because if I know anything about Jason Moore, he knows the answer to yeah, this. Yeah, that's question. what I was thinking. Well, I don't know this answer, but Jason probably does. Look, Brett, I hope that is not your name. Okay, <laughs> I hope that you are using an alias here, because otherwise, I mean, your wife knows who you are. You know, she right. she she sees what you're seeing. She's she knows that you don't like it, but she's making a choice. She's thinking that this one is better than the alternative. Because careful what you wish for, Brett. Careful what you wish for. You think, oh yeah, I like that. She's trying to keep up her appearance. I don't like the makeup that much. What if she goes no makeup she's, and you go? The last line was, "I think you're pretty without makeup." He doesn't know. <laughs> he does know. Uh, I don't know, man. I think. I what think if, maybe if, is she like the 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 oh what was the the shows where it's like they the, the wife has to wake up before the husband so they can get all the makeup on is so that you, a so thing? you ne I think that was a thing like in the yeah in like the old older times really oh for sure like never reveal yeah, your I, you face will, you will never see me without makeup that's that's Which, yeah, that's, that's a real thing. that was a real thing look the answer is clearly you're screwed you have no opportunity to say anything here <laughs> there's not I have no answer for you. Okay. I cannot fathom one sentence that would possibly successfully work if I think you're pretty without makeup did not work. All right. How about how about this? How about this? A nice, you know, pretty hefty gift certificate <laughs> to a nice like <laughs> to spa. A, to, okay. And you're gonna leave it open, right? You know, you could go get a massage, you know? Uh huh. But she could go get Botox. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, it's her choice. But, like, they, you know, find a nice place that does good facial work. What if but you... that's not... You gotta... How do you convince somebody to take off makeup? Yeah. It, but if 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 she's doing this to combat her aging, would she idea. automatically I, I, okay, Mike, wear you got less one? makeup? My idea was, what if you start talking about yourself? Say, hey, I, you know, the crow's feet, they're coming in. This, uh, like, I mean, I have a... Because of my scowl, my all my resting angry face, I have. You just, got the lines? Like the, no, the line between my eyes oh, is yeah. like it's it, the, the, the wrinkle is about as deep as it possibly gets. So you say, I'm self conscious about these things for me. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna get, and then you go in and you get yourself a little. Oh, there I you thought go. you were gonna say. I thought you were <laughs> no. gonna say. Even with all these, I'm just gonna age gracefully. But <laughs> no. it wasn't. It was. I'm gonna go get this fixed. Yeah, yeah that's a smart idea. And then Mike. you get rid of your wrinkles too. She's not gonna stop wearing makeup. It's a win well. No, if she's doing this to combat her aging, then she will not feel like she has to cake it on when <laughs> she's less wrinkled. I, this is brilliant, Mike. Two. I have two Brett, other ideas. Fix your face progressively. <laughs> progressively reduce the size of all her makeup tools to be smaller and smaller every day. How do you do that? Practically speaking, how do you take a makeup brush and then tomorrow have it be a slightly you buy smaller a makeup brush? series of smaller brushes and change them out slowly over time. Okay. And that way it's at least more burdensome. Now, maybe she gets tired of it. Are we talking like you would notice the difference from day one to day two or it's so no, no, gradual no. that this, this, this whole plan will take you years? I'm hoping that, yes, it will take years, and I'm hoping that she just gets tired of how long it's taking with the smaller and smaller brushes. Or you get a hold of all her recent pictures, and you Photoshop them so they're so much worse than reality so that she connects the dots to looking bad in photos to too much makeup. I think that won't work. I think that will <laughs> cause more makeup. Um, how about alternatively? Oh, no, to cover up what she thinks she looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. What if you start applying makeup, <laughs> Brett? Your own? She might not like it, and she asks you, I don't think I like you with blush. And you say, back at you, babe. <laughs> huh? Do they make makeup that's like that, Um, you know, they have the the the, oh, man. the markers where, like, if you draw on a certain kind of paper, it doesn't show up at all? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, the, like invisible the invisible. Like, could we have yeah. invisible. Is there an invisible makeup situation? Ooh. Maybe she just wants the habit. 
She just needs the process. We, we are out of our We have depth. no idea. <laughs> we have no, no out of idea. our depth, Mike. This is our depth. Okay, what? Well, I'm sticking with mine then. And I'm if, sticking hey, with Mike's. You know what? If she if she doesn't want it, I'm still gonna go <laughs> yeah. gonna go take care of my wrinkles. Absolutely. I'm with Mike on this. Go Botox your face, yeah. Brett. If that is even your name. Martin from Patreon recently found out that a Christmas present we were given by my in-laws this year was actually given to them by my brother-in-law. I want to give it to my brother-in-law next <laughs> Christmas. My wife says no. How do I let my in-laws know that we know without bringing it up directly? This reminds me of, I mean, partially reminds me of a very funny video that I saw where um, an older grandmother at a Christ oh, yes, at yes. a Christmas event <laughs> with her whole family, they had secretly taken items from her own house, wrapped them all up, and given them sequentially to her as her presents from the family. Oh my gosh. Or actually no, they, no, they opened were giving them it up. to each other. They were giving them to each other and then they would open them up and then she'd end up going, I, I have something just like that. <laughs> and they did it four or five times, and then eventually she realized she goes, Wait, guys, <laughs> did you wrap up things from the house? But um the regifting. I mean, the regifting is, let's just call a spade a spade. When you can do it, and you just unlocked not having to buy a gift, it's pretty great. It, it's it's fantastic because the truth is you don't regift stuff you love, right? Correct. But you're Correct. also not trying to give a bad gift, so you think it's regiftable, and someone else it might apply to better. So it is a win-win. You get rid of nonsense you don't need in your life. You don't have to buy a gift. And hopefully, if if, if it's a re-gift done well, then um, you know it's, it's still loved by the receiver. Now, let's call a spade a spade. That's 1% of the time. That's 1% of the time that re-gifting is loved by the... You're saying because if a crap gift is a crap gift, it's a crap gift. That's exactly what I'm now, saying. This was risky, by the way. The in-laws from the brother-in-law. This is an inner family regifting. That was a risk they took. I'm trying to figure out what's most important here to Martin because he says, how do I let my in-laws know we know? So is that what it comes down to? Is that Martin simply wants them to know that we know you regifted? I think maybe maybe he wants them to know so that when the gift is given at Christmas to the brother-in-law, they're both in on it. Because that would be funny. So here's the thing. So you you want to give it to your brother-in-law next Christmas. Wife says no. I just recommend two gifts. Get get a gift that you uh, a real gift a real gift, and then also wrap this one. Yeah, and give it to them, and then you know, and then just give them that stare down when yeah, they yeah the open. jig is stare up stare in their eyes we, when they open like, it. We should. Uh, I'm I'm bringing a public service here. Regifting. Needs we need to remove all negative social stigma upon regifting. You're saying because, it's the consequence of buying a bad gift for well, somebody, it, and it's just it happens. Like you're giving someone a gift, sometimes you hit the mark, sometimes you do not. And and you know what? If you get someone something they don't want, it's okay. That that should not then all of a sudden be the gift giver has. To, oh, I'm so insulted. You didn't like my gift. You were the one who screwed up, and it's. And it's okay because sometimes you miss and like to be able to give it to not, someone. Else. Not every person can handle that, Mike. That's people, why I'm tr I'm putting it out there that people yeah, need, to, but need to cut that it's crap very out. very Mike of you. The, the people. I'm sorry for being pragmatic. There are a certain category of people. Yeah, got to get over it. Who find a lot of necessary value in the... Getting the perfect gift? Not just in the reaction. Yeah, the reaction to the gift of yeah. the yeah, yeah. gift. Like they really need to know how much you love what I just got you. So important. People, like, you need to ham it up for. Oh yeah, for sure. It, it doesn't matter whether it's good or Mike, bad. Mike doesn't like any of this. No, I don't. These social situations. No, I. I do don't you like. Do you not have those no, people I'm, in your life? I'm. I am aware of it. I have experienced it. But what I don't like then is, it is no longer. I am giving you a gift because I want you to have a gift. And now now it's I'm doing something that you no. think is for you, but guess no. what? It's no, about no, no. me. Yeah, that is, yes, it is. That is 100% well, yeah, what those people are yes. doing. But, the, okay, the reaction maybe. But if you give somebody something that you think that they're going to really enjoy, and then later on you get to watch them enjoy it, it is very satisfying. Sure. Because you're happy for them. That's not about you. Like, no. my sister got me a 
hat for Christmas that she put effort into getting. And I didn't know this, but she had been watching our footballer show every day until I finally wore the hat. And then she was really excited that I wore the hat on the show. Right. But now, you, was that about her? No. But if if you had not liked the hat, you never would have worn it. Correct. But my point being is it that, sh- that it should not matter. If you give a gift to someone, you're hoping they enjoy it. It will bring you joy as the gift giver to see them yeah, there is a like lot it. Of, but there's a lot of guilt mixed up in gifts. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that's that's yeah. the right word. There can be guilt mixed up Guilty in gifts. Guilty gifts. It's a gift. This is why I hate gifts. Gift. This is why gift. I hate gifts. I hate them. I hate well, the receiving worst, gifts. The worst thing you could ever get somebody is like a big painting. <laughs> oh, That's weird. the worst <laughs> gift you can give. Yeah. Even if you think it's the best painting ever. You got to do the thing where you you have that painting nearby and you swap it out when they come over. Oh, you you were stuck. Because if somebody gives you something like that, you either have to hang it somewhere prominent or have a reason why you don't. Oh, man. Coming it's, up with a reason worst. why you don't is not, yeah. is not good here. No, that's <laughs> where you literally, it might be better to rent a house and just be like, yeah, I have it in the other house. Like, just... To protect yourself. From I mean, that. if it's fine art, that one's easy. We got robbed. Ooh, oh, nice, nice, nice one. They yeah. only took the paper. I spilled orange juice on it. On took, the wall? It was a thief of such distinguished yeah. taste. He climbed the ladder, got the painting, <laughs> climbed down the ladder, and took off. Um. All right. I think we settled that one. We did. Brandy from Patreon, one last life advice question for us. I bought a mini fridge off of Amazon. It had a tiny dent in the corner. I mentioned it to Amazon, and they said because a fridge is listed as a food item, they cannot accept a return. They said they're sending me another mini fridge oh, at no cost and to dispose of the old one. <laughs> is it wrong to sell the dented one when I was told to dispose of it? Is this stealing or unsavory? I, no, no. It's not unsavory at all. No. Yeah, you're not doing nothing wrong. They told can, you to keep it. Yeah. Can you sell trash? Yeah. That's not wrong or unsavory. Yeah. It just no, no one's probably buying it, but they're going to buy this fridge. Now, it's a mini fridge, so you could double deck this thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? You could just go one Amazon, on top of the other. Keep them both. It, it, Amazon's not in the business of like guaranteeing this hits the landfill in order to allow them to send you a second one. That's not how it works. So, yeah, this is yours to so do what you will. Now, personally, I, I'm viewing this like we do fantasy football. I'm trading the not dented one you, or selling. selling oh, the you're going to keep the dented Absolutely. one. Absolutely. What's the wrong dent- with a dent? Yeah, what's wrong with the dent? But it's going gonna, it's gonna to lose me money on my resale. Now I got to li- I'm selling a brand new refrigerator or I'm selling a well, you dented could, used you, one. You could probably. Now, here's where you would get a problem, maybe. If you same exact scenario, you get the new fridge in. You're supposed to dispose of the old one. You decide to return the fridge. You return mm. the new fridge without a dent. You get a full refund. You still have the old dented fridge. And that is the answer. <laughs> I think you, I don't think there's anything because if with you're that. saying you can sell the non-dented fridge to the public, can you refund the non-dented fridge and keep? I feel like if they were gonna, if the if the company reaches out and says we're gonna send you a new fridge. Don't send it back. Like we can't accept it because of actual rules and laws about these things. Then you just say, uh, "Just refund me the money." And, and I'll then they'll it. be like, "Please send us the dented fridge back." <laughs> but they can't. They can't take it back. Hmm. It's the weird thing, you know, when you go to a, a just a restaurant or especially fast food because you see it happen. Oh yeah, they just you throw- you walk up to the counter, you say, uh, "I I ordered this without mustard," and I bring it because mustard. If mustard's on a burger. It's, it's there. You, you can't. I'm saying if you don't like mustard, you can't take it off because it will still taste like mustard. They say, "Oh, we'll fix that for you right away." Then they just throw it in the garbage. And you're like, "Well, well hold on, hold on. <laughs> someone will eat this burger. What do the we? The garbage will eat it. And that throwing... someone is me. <laughs> yeah, I got a friend I right got, here. I got mustard on this. I'm gonna need it redone. I'm a. I'm a hold on to it. I'm <laughs> not saying I'm, and I'm not condoning to work the system, but I'm saying if they screw up, like there's got to be a better way for us than just throwing away like food that's ready for someone to eat at least give it to one of the employees you should have one person in the back that eats it all (laughs) that's what i'm saying ted yeah ted's in the back you give him all the food that 
came out wrong. Teddy trash can. Um, all right, quick break. Back with our draft. The Spitballers Draft. All right, we are looking at hobbies. Hobbies you'd like to try at some point in your life where you're drafting hobbies. You'd like to try. Yes. I, I'm i excited about this. There, there are some things in my list that I've done before, and I think I'm going to take those off. Okay. Just under the premise that, like, I really want to pick stuff that I've never done before in my life that I would, I'm interested in trying. You sure. are, you, You're you, allowed. You, you could have also just drafted things and said you've never done it, and we would not know. See, I, you know, that's unsavory. Okay. That's like keeping it's the fridge. man of principle. Mike? All right, I'm the first pick. Yeah, what do you want to try? What's your so, hobby that you're interested in? I have, I have talked about this hobby the many times on this show. I still have never tried it. I, I would say, I've never gotten the opportunity to try, but it's because I have not made that opportunity happen. There's no one to blame but myself. So, but that's with all of I these. think I know what it is. What letter does it start with? It starts with a B. Blacksmithing. Blacksmithing. Yeah. The creation and formation of things out of metal is so fascinating to me. It's really this, got you, huh? This, because, like, you know how you get, you can get trapped in the, in the swiping of certain videos catch your eye? Like, if I ever get hit with the algo of people... That's it, it, just it is outside is snow. There's snow everywhere. It's coming down, but you're in this warm house with with a with a furnace, and you're and then you're able to do blacksmithing, and they're beating the crap out of forming a sword on an anvil. Something about it is just like there's Speaks there's there's your, something deep inside of me. Nordic background, yes, yeah, possibly or dw dwarven potentially could right, be that, that as beard, well. Yeah. But there's just something about making. Create, fastening something out of metal with your hands sounds so appealing you and like so the, awesome. You like the romanticized, like you finish the long day's work, you go into the bathroom, you look in the mirror, you're kind of just, oh, you have yeah. a glisten, with a, a black glisten. Yeah, I've got the, the what, ash, I guess. Yeah, I sure, don't know. sure. Soot. soot. Yeah, soot. I was going to say soot, but is that, is that, does uh, that happen, Josh? It can't be soot. You can get soot from, from blacksmithing? Are you a blacksmither? It is definitely soot. Okay, totally. so I'm, I'm just covered in soot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be... That's that's a, that's, a, that's a day's work. Yeah. All right. When that's what hobbies are, it's a day's work. <laughs> um, okay. All right. I'm gonna go. Whew, hmm. So I'm. I'm. <laughs> oh, wow, Jay, it's your first pick. The problem that I have with this draft in general is I want to draft something or several things on my list. I want to do it. Knowing that I would then be good at this hobby, okay. but that's not really what's no. happening here. We're just trying something. No, you're gonna find out whether you like it. Exactly, and I already know on uh, uh, some of these is not gonna work <laughs> out. So, so do like, you really want to try them? Like, if you had the chance to go try one today, that's and, how you have to draft. So the number one thing that I would want, I am not gonna draft because the for the same reason I haven't done it in real life. Because I don't think I'd be good at it. I would love to be good at it. I'll leave that in case one of you guys uh, drafts it. Okay. Instead, something I think I will I would do fine at. I would enjoy. I would love. And and in fact, I got a taste of this recently, a couple months ago. And man, did I fall in love with it! And it's fallen out of the sky. I would love uh, to do yes. skydiving, but like yeah. as a hobby, not why like did, go why did skydiving. You, say you got once. a taste of it. He did the I, indoor. I did the the I fly. Oh, the that indoor is a skydiving. taste. That is a taste. And it was. So so much fun to me. It was, it was, I loved it way more than I thought. I, I thought it would just be like, dead neat. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, and so like, if I did so skydiving, skydiving as a hobby, I don't want to, I don't want to go skydiving. Like, I don't even want to go try it once. I would want to get into it where like Sundays are, you know, You're I go skydiving. Yeah, ex I, yeah, exactly. I, where it's like, that's just part of. Like what I like doing Jason in my life. Jason the Skydiver. Yeah. That's what they call him. That's what they would call me. Covered in soot <laughs> after a hard day's work. <laughs> All right. So, um, so skydiving. Yeah. All right. All right. My first my first pick here. Wait, wait. When you asked, now that I'm looking back at it, uh -huh. 
you said I got a taste of this. Yeah. Just, did yeah. you think like I fell down the stairs or something? <laughs> like <laughs> I was on my roof. And I was, I was like, whoa, I, into the bush. I did have the mental picture of you jumping like 10 feet from something and being like, this is a good time. It's hard to get a taste of skydiving. That's why I laughed at But you really, going to an indoor one was a taste. Yeah. He's I just got a cape stripped. <laughs> Jumps, he jumped off his roof once. And he's patio. like, you know what? All right. My first pick is going to be something I've never done that people enjoy tremendously. So he says he's never um, done. <laughs> right. People people uh, build a lot of their lives around this hobby, but I've never done it, and I'm going to turn 40 this year, and that is skiing and snowboarding. Oh. Uh, I've never done it. I I know people that, like, they're obsessive about it. Every winter, yep. they go on ski trips. People seem to absolutely love it. So it seems like something yeah. I should have tried, but now I feel like, you know, 20 was about the right age to ski to ski i feel like now my odds of hitting the tree much higher uh, it's not the tree you need to worry you need to worry about your bum bum uh i did i've been snowboarding one time okay and all right the during the training like the first time i went down any sort of hill i i ate it i bruised the crap out of really? my tailbone immediately at the beginning of this ski trip and i'm telling you it was this was a new pain. <laughs> this was that, this was a pain where I'm like, I mean, we have more days. Well, first, I got to finish this day, and then we have more days. I'm like, eh, it was like a burden. I don't really need to do it now. Let me ask you, Andy. You said skiing and snowboarding. Well, we can give you both. But if you had, that's 100 percent why I said it like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. But if you were to go and up do it to Big Bowl right yeah, now ski. or whatever, you would choose skiing. I would choose skiing. Yeah, I, I would believe too, it's because I believe it's easier. Yeah, yeah, it has it, to be. It, it, it is. You have and two I, legs instead of one. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. My. Um, and you don't have to fall on your bum bum when you fall. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, maybe. It's far less likely. Oh, you man. do the splits instead. And um, dude, the, the, the terror of the ski lift when you have no idea what you're doing is rough. <laughs> it's rough. Get your, like, get your kids skiing so they know how to do it. But learning as an adult, I'd be surprised to learn what are the actual numbers of people who have never done anything like that and then they pick up skiing later in their life. My second pick is going to be it's going to be fishing. Okay. Um which I have fished before barely. But I'm really thinking of the kind of picturesque a river runs through it fly fishing. Okay. Because All right, so you're you're out there in I'm out I'm I'm wading in with those yeah. rubber Big boots, boots I and I believe I'm, they're called waders. I'm waiting in with my I waiter. I think it probably is. <laughs> and, but it's like the river is right there and it's serene and it's quiet. And like, uh, again, this is something people do a lot of and I've never tried it. And I think that's what we're drafting. Uh, yeah, they a are hobby, called waiters. <laughs> really? A yeah. hobby I'd like, like to try. Can I take your order, please? Got it. <laughs> but with a D. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. So, so, fly fishing is. Has Have you been fly fishing? I have not. That seems like, a, that's like advanced fishing. Yeah, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, but it does seem just the idea of a peaceful day mm -hmm. fishing. But you got to stand the whole time. See, if, if I was That's true. If I was fishing, if if I yeah, wanted to go fishing, yeah. I think I would want to be standard, on a standard standard lazy boy fishing. Yeah, la oh, can I bring a lazy boy on a boat? You can. Fish from my lazy boy? Yeah. <laughs> hold right. hold the fishing rod and Now do you want I just want a lazy boy on a boat. Would you rather lake fish or deep sea fish? think i would rather lake fish oh, lake i'm fish. not man enough for deep like deep sea fishing would be awesome and cool but i would die i would hey, probably end up dying. seasickness bro i'm not worried about that i i'm, I'm i don't You're worried get about the marlin sickness. i'm worried about the fish and the ocean and the boat <laughs> you know those things <laughs> okay all Fair right enough. jason you you get to pick another hobby all right uh you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> I'll, I'll wait one more round for this because okay. i know you're just gonna take it well, I know Mike can't take it, so um, I'm going to go with home brewing slash distilling. Oh, it's on that's my a, list. That's a great, great pick. It's on my yeah, list. it's like you know, I I I I love whiskeys. I don't really know how they're you know made. What? I'm going to 
I'm going to make a contention here that you have a higher likelihood of dying with that hobby than you would open sea fishing. <laughs> yeah, you think yeah, so? Yeah. Well, well, because one of them I will do and one of them I wouldn't. What are the dangers? Yeah, what Chemicals. Are really? Yeah, I mean, if you're in a, like a like, not- Like poison? Like, I'm afraid he won't ventilate properly. You have to That's ventilate? That's a problem? See, he didn't know you have to mm. ventilate. Jay, we would have been gone oh, first man. batch. <laughs> yeah. First batch, two guys <laughs> in the basement. Can, well, can you do it outside? Can you, Can I brew- in the back, I'm backyard hard brews. Hey, Papa Josh, I'm not wrong about this, right? I mean, that's like a big part of home brewing. Yeah, you got to vent the stuff or it'll just explode. Or it'll explode? And with home brewing, you put it in a giant glass jar called a carboy, and that would be bad. Yeah, I would only want a bus boy, so. Um, all right. Woo! <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> if only I could hit yeah. some Busted. crickets. Um, all right. That's all I get. Yeah. I thought You're I not got to. take another no, break? <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about it. All right, um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'll. G- <laughs> I can't believe it's on my list, and I'm looking at it, going, "Yeah, yeah." You're taking it. Yeah, bird watching. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, dude I almost <laughs> put it on my list. It's so. I got no problem good. with that. It's- Guys, we're so old. <laughs> we are so. You can so- sit too. You don't have to stand. That's that's what's great. I'm- I sit in the forest. It's beautiful, and then I just look, I look at birds. Oh, I'm not, I'm not against this. Now it is. If you look up on the chart, Mike, it is the opposite of blacksmithing. Yes, those are on the yeah. opposite ends of the spectrum. But I'm all about bird watching. That's good. You do not have to be old. I'm telling you. So I, I had a girlfriend in college who was a bird watcher. She had like this massive. Her name was Esther. <laughs> she was 63 she- years old. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave a heck of a back rub. Um, no, but like she was a legitimate bird watcher, had like this giant book of all the uh, photographs, and it, she knew every name, like real nerd stuff. And I participated a few times, and it's like, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so nice. You it's, get a nice set get of your binoculars. Bird on, man. You get a nice set of binoculars, and you start actually like. It was just relaxing and fun. I, I thought about putting it on my list, but I thought, man, like, it like, would not go over well. Yeah, well. well I'm shocked you took bird watching, but I'm I'm full endorsement. I guess I like to just sit. Sitting is good. Sitting, yeah. Sitting out yeah, in, yeah. in a nature-esque, peaceful area. That's great. And I like birds. I like to be surrounded by uh, birds singing. Okay. So I may as well throw in some binocs and, yeah. and see what they're doing up well, there. And have you seen they have these like five, $6,000 binoculars where- It'll like identify with AI the species inside the binocular. Even better. <laughs> All right, blacksmithing okay. and bird watching. All That's right. Mike. So All I right. I I get another one here. You get another B hobby. <laughs> I'm out bowling. Ooh, I do like bowling. It's fun. Um, I am gonna go with. I'll go astronomy. Interesting. Uh, super. I mean, if you've listened to the show, I'm very into space. Uh, with like, uh, my daughter is also very into space. And so, you know, when it's nice at night, frequently we'll just go and kind of, you know, see what we can see up there, try and identify some constellations. I got all the, the nerd apps and one of, uh, I, I am the guy who, uh, I know like one thing about space and where's it's up, it's where it well, it's up. So I know two things, <laughs> uh, but, but almost always like the brightest star in the sky is is venus so when you get to like drop that bomb on mm-hmm. people they're like you, they they think they know what it's you're like no that's venus like, well are you sure and then you pull out the app you're like oh yeah yeah it is and people are wowed so, so that's you want to be just, that's just a key that's a little nugget keep it in your pocket okay. mm-hmm. all right um and also i'm telling you this if i pull that app out <laughs> and it's like that's the north star or whatever i'm gonna be so well, mad at you here's, michael here's your other thing planets don't twinkle Okay, planets don't twinkle. Planets don't twinkle because they're too close. So that the the reason that There's it, no they twinkle, twinkle, twinkle little planet. Correct. <laughs> Sounds like a hobby he's already tried. Correct. But I don't. But I don't have a telescope or anything like that. So I, I would be. I'd be interested in spending all the monies and that's not actually that's a good seeing one. things. I, I could have regifted you a telescope when I was 15 years old. Well, I didn't know you. Yeah. Esther had one. <laughs> yeah, um, my mom thought I wanted a telescope, and I did not. Well, it sounds right. awesome. Skydiving and home brewing, Jason. That's what you got. So what's your third pick? Oh, well, this one was the one that I knew Mike couldn't draft because he already 
he already does this. He can't try this hobby. Okay. Dungeons and Dragons, man. I mean, we. we my man. Yeah, my man. It sounds awesome. We yeah, know people that do it. Because it is. Uh, it's right up all of our nerd alleys. Uh, you uh, know, cool people. Yeah, alley. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not Jason. for nerds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's for cool people doing really cool things. And I, I, it, it sounds fun. It seems fun. Everybody that I know that has done it has enjoyed it. And I'm definitely cool enough yes. to uh, thrive at Dungeons & Dragons. That would be fun. I would add that. Do we got to get a game going? I'm just, I haven't even, I've not looked at Josh, but I can feel him. <laughs> I can feel his energy radiating right now. All right. Is it uh, It's up to me? It, it is. is. Back to you. My third pick is going to be the combination of running a vineyard winery. <gasps> Ooh. Because... I, at first, I thought about going, I'll just be transparent. I thought I was going to do like gardening. Then I was like, w but maybe like trees, like an orchard, which by the way, they're called orchardists, which oh, is, I've never be heard that before. Orchardist. What? Yeah, that's, that's like the name. That's the word we settled on? I literally you said, what do you call a person who orchardist? runs an orchard? And it's an orchardist. Yeah. But then I realized it's more like the wine thing is perfect because you're like, cultivating so that's the gardening part okay and you're making the you know you've got all these grapes and it's and you are you gonna do the stamping i might hire out for the stamping <laughs> i will do the, the the tending to the vines okay so this I might hire out for the tending to the vines <laughs> okay so this but hobby, i'll do the observing i'll do I'm, the tasting andy wants to live on a vineyard so that's this, where he it just wouldn't be bad <laughs> this hobby is Employing. Employment. Well, you see, Jason, I was making jokes. Business owner. I was joke. making jokes. Okay. I would actually like the, the combination of taking care of plants and then reaping the rewards. You know, sure. Uh, similar to why you chose the dis distillery yeah. beer making thing. It's just that you go out and you maintain plants, which I think is rewarding if you do it well. And then you uh, you I make some wine. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to... I got one more pick. You got some one fish more. and some wine. You need a dessert in here. Yeah, I mean, I've got a bunch of different. Hmm. I'm gonna say. Oh, he's torn. I'm torn because I have stuff that I've actually done a little bit of, and I don't want to pick it. Like kayaking would be one that I could think about. Okay. Like, I think that'd be fun, or or just like boating in general. But I've done a little bit of it. I even had hang gliding on here, which is kind of similar to like skydiving. Yeah. Wait, have you done hang gliding? No. Oh, you okay. got a little taste of it though. Yeah, the other day, <laughs> he, fell off my bike. He, he was holding a piece of cardboard and he ran real fast. Um, but I think. Hmm. Wow. This I think is a, tough, I, I'm going to go yeah. with no, no, no. I think I'm going to go with whatever. A, what's a person that has an aquarium? <laughs> Aquariumist. Uh, what would you call that? That's a hobby, right? Yeah. People keep an aquarium. Yeah. That's I'm gonna do that. So you're taking a, fishing a, twice. Aquarium <laughs> dauntless. A different kind of fishing. One I eat, I, I catch them and I put them in the aquarium. Nice. Oh, that's next level. That's double dipping. Yeah. Is that legal? I, so is it fish taking? <laughs> they all die because fish, fish taking. Fish, fish, fish tankologist. Uh, is that a bad choice? No. That's a done deal, man. <laughs> no, it's, I think that's a great choice. Aquarium. I, think, I mean, I think if you knew what you were doing, wouldn't that be fun to do? Yeah. If you had. Like a big one. Yes. Yeah, a gigantic aquarium. Yeah. Where like in my aquarium wall. room. I have had, like, gr growing up, we got a really nice fish tank. An aquarist? Josh, is that what we're seeing? An aquarist. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll stick, we'll stick with aquarium. Um, But, uh, and, and it was, for me, and obviously I know I'm like the anti-museum guy, it was so unfulfilling to me. Like, just, just like. It, like, one, you talk to the fish, they don't talk back. Yeah, they don't do anything. Are you saying going to a big aquarium? I'm just saying, no. Isn't like it when fun you to go to one, though? Oh, yeah, if you dude. go to, if if there's, you know, piranhas and sharks or just crazy big fish Oh, there'll fish be sharks whatever. in my tank. Well, sh okay, well, I didn't know you were having a shark in your house. That's awesome. <laughs> the little ones. Okay. Uh, that, I'm going to go with that because I, I don't know anything about that. Like baby shark? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, honestly. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jay. What's your last pick? All right. Don't do stand-up comedy. This is um, this is one that I I don't know that I could. It, it's very similar, Andy, to your skiing, snowboarding. Where if you started it in your twenties, you're good. I know. I don't it, think I, I, know I can. What it is. I don't think I can. 
really succeed, but I would it's definitely. Reading. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got hurt. <laughs> I would love to try it. I, I think it would be so much fun. Um, and that would be surfing. Okay. S That's such a better pick than aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a better pick. That's a great pick. Thanks. Thanks. But I, I surfing, I mean, the, the, if I grew up in California, I would have done surfing. We right. Yeah, grew up in Arizona. Be, you don't belong. really have a lot of options for surfing. I think you could still pick it up. I just don't know if I can put it down. Get up on the board. I think you could. I, if I, I, I've got good strong legs. I got, I got. Well, you got yeah, to You got to get a good. You got to get a, hindquarters. You got to yeah. get a, a good chest push though. Is that is that the yeah? Because because well, you you're can on do the, that. You're on the belly. Yeah. As you paddle, and then you do a basically like a really. How do you do up. on like standing up in general? Pretty poor. <laughs> so that was my. That's my worry. What about standing up from your belly? Can you start surfing start on, standing up? <laughs> <laughs> the first Have they figured that one out yet. The first thing you should do if you really uh, want to get into it is on a daily basis just get on your belly on the ground, and then just try to get up. From there, I do not want then, to be surfing anymore. And then put yourself on a board in the ocean. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, but that that seems like it would be a a ton of fun. Sure. And you're on the ocean. You're in the ocean. That's fun. It's way more fun than an aquarium. All right, uh, Mike blacksmithing, bird watching, astronomy, and and if you thought Jason wasn't nerdy enough with his D and D pick, LARPing. Oh my, LARPing, goodness. baby! Are you serious? For those who do not know. We're not looking at Andy's eyes. Live action role play. <laughs> Super nerdy. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Yeah, but how? Fireball. How much fun would it be? <laughs> it would be so not fun. Oh, it would. I think you're saying be, just buying all the way in. Yeah, that, just, that's that's what you have to do. Like if you go out there being like this is stupid and everyone here is a nerd it's going to be the worst experience of your life and like, that's how i would go out okay have yeah, you been, me too i couldn't do I it don't i don't think i couldn't it. fake if it if i long saw enough. them in a field i just i couldn't do it man i i think that if you can allow yourself to buy in it would be just an incredible time this isn't have this, you ever done any ren fair stuff not i pretended to be from eight the 1400s i have gone to the renaissance fair Right, and you're not you when you look at everyone who's oh, costume man. up because it's like ninety five percent of people. Yes, that proves my point. Like when I go to the Renaissance <laughs> Festival, I see these people. I'm like, oh my goodness, this you, is so too like, much. You go like medieval times. You're not looking at them. Medieval wrong. times is great. Those are they're actors. LARPing. They're actors paid to act. They're doing a performance. They're performing. Yeah, when Den Denzel Washington is not a LARP. When you when you're LARPing. It's you're make believing, which is great <laughs> yeah. for children. I highly encourage all you, children. The make -believe. medieval times people are make believing. They are. You, there's no, a script. I'm on Jason's there's side a with this script. One. They're, They're putting on a show. Gonna win. They're like, putting on a show. If so the, the larpers charge tickets to watch them larp, they would be entertainers, not larpers. Right. They are doing it for their own personal entertainment. So that's the difference. That so is it, the it, difference. It yes. becomes not nerdy if people are paying yes. to watch. Yes. 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 Very yes. much weird, super not nerdy uh -huh. in that situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, because there's an, like an entire profession that that we as a society put at the top of our prestige, and all they do is they pretend to do stuff. Yes, it's on the acting. top. It's on the the tip top of my yeah. prestige. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. At the very bottom, <laughs> larping. <laughs> <laughs> all right, blacksmithing, bird watching, astronomy, and larping. Jason with skydiving, home brewing, uh, D and D, and surfing. I went with skiing, fishing, growing a vineyard. Okay. And aquarium. And aquarium. <laughs> but it took you quite a while to select the aquarium. I don't, you know, I really couldn't find that last one. I should have just gone with surfing. Yeah. What did we learn today? I Look, I'll tell you right off the bat, I, I learned that an orchard maker is an orchardist. <laughs> That's stupid. I learned that we should get into business half off sales for oh yeah for going on the 50 50 you want to split a casket i would love to split a thank casket. you dibs on top oh crap yeah you're lame. i've learned that there is a very strong lacking of front doors on the second story of yeah. houses yeah well it's a new business i want jason to try to catch me up a ladder though <laughs> come at me bro all right i will just pull the bottom goodbye goodbye 
Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com. Thank you.